Here are some sobering facts. The United States is losing an average of $600 billion every year to foreign countries through our trade deficit. This money does not come back to buy our goods and services. Foreign countries are bankrolling the United States government with levels as high as almost 50% of U.S. Treasury debt in foreign hands. Foreign countries are using the rest of this money to buy out our core industries and companies. Many American industries are now controlled by non-U.S. companies. Foreign lenders are effectively propping up the United States government, lowering U.S. interest rates and consumer spending. If foreign countries were to stop extending this easy credit to the United States, the price of imported goods would go up and the government would have to raise interest rates in order to attract lenders for U.S. Treasury debt. Americans naively assume faith in the perpetuity of the United States' status as a superpower. No superpower in history has ever produced so little of what it consumes for so long without taking on such overwhelming debt. But why is this a risk? At some point, as U.S. debt continues to skyrocket, Foreign creditors may demand something more than printed paper and securities for this credit. As they are presently using much of these dollars to buy our assets, there will be less and less of the U.S. to offer as security. The United States' rate of indebtedness and asset loss are climbing much faster than the rate we are replacing them with new industries and new assets. Americans assume that at some point, we will be able to rebuild our industries at a whim. This takes time, money, and know-how. Three luxuries that a country at war with massive debts may not have. So why has nothing been done? This has been going on for more than 40 years, and each new administration does nothing. Instead, the United States blames Asian countries for undervaluing their currency and not opening their markets. The United States blames Europe for not helping rein in military threats to global stability and for subsidizing their own industries. Meanwhile, these regions blame the United States for recklessly abusing its superpower status to run up huge deficits to support the American lifestyle without domestic production. By our own admission, we have converted from a production economy to a service economy. However, we don't recognize that a domestic service cannot be readily traded for foreign goods. The reality of this situation is simple. Our only option is to acknowledge the problem and develop a plan to deal with it. The wait-and-see approach is allowing other countries to actively execute their own economic war plans. At the very least, American leaders should formulate a task force to examine this problem thoroughly and understand the magnitude of our economic vulnerabilities and how, under various scenarios, the near term may unfold. To do otherwise is no less than a disgrace to past generations who sacrificed for our present position and a dereliction of duty with respect to future generations that must live with the liabilities this generation establishes. To learn more about our economy and how it affects you, Log on to economyincrisis.org daily.